are back. And uh, Evelyn Keyes will be out shortly. You all, uh, you all know this gentleman. He's a, a fun, funny man and a very nice guy. And he's uh, going to be opening this coming Thursday with the Carpenters at uh, Harris at Lake Tahoe. Would you welcome Norm Crosby? Norm Crosby! How you been? Nice. Good I to see you. Fine. You're looking well. How are you? I am fine. That Sounds was like, like letters from camp, doesn't it? We... Sounds like letters from camp. Remember, Sounds you always like... write, "How are you? I am fine, dear mom." Yeah. How do you spell chicken pox? Your son, so forth. What does infection mean? <laughs> you <can't> remember those? <laughs> what does contagious <laughs> disease mean, mommy? Did you ever go to camp when you were a kid? I was when I was young. Yeah, yeah. they sent me to one. I didn't really want to go. I went for three years. <laughs> Ask me what was I doing? What were you doing? Three years. Three years. <laughs> But I must tell you something. Okay. I You mentioned the Carpenters. Yeah. My next engagement with, with, in Lake Tahoe. The last time I appeared with the Carpenters was at the uh, Sarbin Coliseum in Omaha, Omaha. Nebraska. Sure. Ed's, Ed's played exactly. And I want to tell you something. They, they took me to Channel 6, your old television station. They That's figured right. that over the years, for real, that we had established a clinical infliction. <laughs> and... Uh, that I would be interested in seeing some of your artifacts and some of your basic rudiments. And I told them I'd seen them already, you know, but they didn't care. So anyways, uh, they took me to Channel 6 and I sat w in your w. old chair, John, your and I must tell you, for real, I had tears in my eyes. I really did. There was a splinter. <laughs> in the old chair. But it was... So did you really go back? You must have gone back there, you know. what you Have you been back there? Uh, last time I was back at Omaha? No, it's quite a while ago. You went back to get a, um, they named a school or something? They, something, you were awarded something. No, there. I went back to Norfolk, Nebraska to do the commencement address ah. the high school last year, which was, which was a lot of fun, a great kick, to go back to where you grew up and all of a sudden deliver the commencement address from where you, once you grew up. I was petrified, absolutely petrified. <laughs> I, I was scared, too. Oh, good, I did. About, about the wobbly. <laughs> That's a great story. But I want you to know, I, uh... I'm here tonight, mm -hmm. quite by accident. I was supposed to be in Warwick, Rhode Island this week with oh, Tony yeah. Orlando and yeah. Dawn. Yeah, and... Uh, he's retired from show business. Tony, I, I guess he did. I just... Uh, it's sad because he's a great talent and he's a super guy. I hope he straightens out, you know, whatever he's got to. But it was a, it was a positive in one regard because Tony is such a popular guy and because yeah. the news and the TV all picked it up. It made people aware of the fact that these things do happen occasionally in the business and that the theater owner and the club owner are not at fault. There's no credibility anymore. Yeah. I mean, if people don't believe, they would come to the window and they would say, yeah, it was the guy, he never expected him, or they didn't sign the contract. You know, they, they think that you misconstrue something like that, and it's not true. They had $200,000 advance in the till. I guess he just doesn't want to work right now, or whatever it is. The guy wasn't happy, believe me. You know that if you have $200,000 and you give your wife $5 a week for the rest of her she life... She will be back next you week. you will do three years because the money belongs to the theater people. <laughs> but it's true. We, oh, it, it how much is Did you ever get to the point, the pressure, I mean, where you say, hey, I've, I've had enough, or I'm going to take a year off or something, or... No, pr pressure doesn't bother me. Usually I can't hear it anyways. <laughs> but it, it, you know... Well, that's true. I have, I'm into things. I'm yeah. into extra sensible reception, and I'm into uh, <laughs> yogurt. Yogurt? Oh, I love yogurt. You sit on the floor, you medicate. I like that. <laughs> and my wife is into yogurt. Oh, yeah, she's been going for a couple of years. If things work out, she will move to India next year, and uh, <laughs> we can correspond. So you meditate? But I, I think it's important, really, that you... That you let it out. If you play golf, you play tennis, right? Yeah. If you have, I just have my golf tournament. You have one up too? In, yeah, I have one up in Stadion Springs for the Hope for Hearing Foundation oh, at UCLA. Good. And uh, it's can I ask you about super. Your, can I ask you about your hearing? I know we talked about it. Everybody knows you had a hearing. Have you had it uh, since your childhood? No, no, I got this in the war. No, you see, I, we never mentioned that. No, we no, never no. talked I, about it. We talked that. about it once. You forgot. I was a war hero. I saved the entire crew of my ship. Did How did you, know you that? do that? Yeah, I shot the cook. <laughs> Do <laughs> you think I don't play straight? Just zing them in there. Yeah, but you let me do it so nicely. Of I know how you hate to do that. No, uh, but did I, you really uh, talk about that? It's once? no problem. Yeah, we a long time ago. Oh, you were right. much older. I think. Uh, 
I think people in the business who can handle their pressures. I yeah. mean, take Ed. Ed has been doing a lot of comedy stuff. Yeah. Comedy roles and stuff. But the last time that Ed did a serious, dramatic thing was the, was the Subway Train movie. What was the name of that? The Incident. Right. And when was that? Oh, ten years. Eight years ago. Ten eight years ago. Eight years ago, the man has not done a dramatic role, John, and he still shaves his legs. Now, I think that's incredible. <laughs> I think that's a way of getting it out, don't you think I think that? so, yes, absolutely. I think that young people today, kids who look for insulation, if they knew to alleviate some of that pressure, if they could pick up a trumpet and knew where to put the spit, like Doc does, uh, they could adjust to what's going on. I really mean that. I think, you know, it's going back to what I said about the, about the theater thing. There's no credibility. People don't believe anybody. In the beginning of the show, you picked Miss Universe, and Ed picked, and Charlie said he did, and you didn't believe each other. Nobody believes nobody. That's where it's at. People on the street pass each other that are not even casual acquaintances and can just stay total strangers. I don't understand that. I think there should be an acquaintance. No, I'm serious. I went into a store to get a shirt like this. They have, what do you call them, Selenese, where you can dip them and dunk them. And I went up to the <laughs> counter, and I said to the guy, are they Selenese? He said, no, they're giving them away. Why? I don't know. Why does every... I'm serious. Why does everybody have to be a wise I guy? don't know. Why don't people believe people? You don't... I went in to get paper. That's the truth. Last week, I was on the road at the Mill Run Theater. Yeah. I wanted to get some writing paper. I went in a store that had typewriters and pens. I said to the guy, do you keep stationary? He said, just up to the end. Then I go bananas. <laughs> What's wrong with people? I'll explain I to you. I shot later. the <laughs> you, got, you ought to be ashamed by that one. We'll take a break. We're coming right back. I think you're getting a call on your answer phone. talking about pressure and so forth. Everybody has pressure no matter what job they have, whether it's this. But maybe Robert Redford had walked on the set or something. <laughs> then you said that I looked at Charles, said I looked in good health. How about you? Do you take care of yourself? Do you do no, anything really, I'm, outside I'm of golf, cool. which is really I, I, not exercise? I don't exercise much, but I'm yeah. busy all the time. I work a lot. But it's very, you, you can forget sometimes when you're on the road to, you know, to watch what you eat, for example. Like, uh, it's crucial. It really is to watch what you eat. I mean that. Otherwise, you could stick the fork, you know, right in, in your face. <laughs> but kids, young people who don't understand that, I mean, I, you, you look at somebody that looks pectoral and coherent, and you don't know what could lie dormant right. in his own uh, stigma. A friend of mine uh, who was really a virile, circumvented uh, <laughs> big guy, Went to an eminent doctor in Beverly Hills, this is the truth, yeah. a doctor that takes care of uh, people who get eminent. And he, um, he told him he had schizoid carcinoma. You know what that is? Well, it sounds bad. It's like a secret fear of being on this show. Ah. And he overcame that by watching what he ate. He ate only things with iron. He would have iron capsules and iron serum and iron pills. And he could move and function as long as he faced the North Pole. You know, that was important. <laughs> But I have a story that I hope will save us, John. It's going to be uh, fine. About three elderly ladies who were talking about their health, and one woman said, you know, Knockwood, I'm okay. I'm 78 years old, and I feel good. I eat nice. But my mind is gone completely. My memory, I forget about it. I was the other day, pick up the telephone, I call my girlfriend, and when she said hello to me, I don't remember who I called and why I'm calling her. And the second woman said, you know, Knockwood, I'm the same. My health is good. I eat nicely every day. But I, the same thing, my memory, it's gone for me. I, put, I was going shopping. I put on the new shoes, and I took the good bag, and I dress up nice. I put the stuff, and uh, I went on the bus, and I got to the store. I don't know what I'm doing there, and I forgot what I came to buy. And the third woman said, you know something? I'm 84 years old. I'm older than the both of you. I'm healthy. Thank goodness, and my memory is terrific. Come in. <laughs> That's a fine. I've heard that switch. Wasn't there an old joke about the guy who went to the psychiatrist and says, I'm having a terrible thing. I can't remember anything for more than a minute. I mean, it's just terrible. 
Guy says, how long have you had? And he says, had what? I know that. You know that one. Obviously, you're not alone. We'll be right... Evelyn Keyes will join us in just a moment and talk about her book, Scarlett O'Hara's Younger Sister. We'll be right back. (laughs) 